Blacksit family. Blacksit family. Blacksit family. Firstly, let me say thank you so much for your kind donations and um, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for sharing our videos. I can see that our subscriptions um, have gone up substantially in the last month or so. And I'd like to thank you all so very much for all your help and support. But today I come to you with a heavy heart. So I'm not smiling today because I'm not very happy today. Today I'm, I want to say enough is enough. And um, I've got some wonderful people with me today. Um, and we're going to make a video to appeal to everybody in the Black Sit family and to everybody in the diaspora and especially to our brothers and sisters on the continent that are considering going the back way. Now, what do I mean by the back way? The back way is a way in which many of our brothers and sisters on the continent pay people uh, to get into dangerous boats or lorries or go overland or sometimes through the desert, so many different methods but to leave the continent. And why are they doing this? They're doing this because of the beautiful images that are presented to them of uh, Europe and America and of this wonderful, glorious, uh, glamorous life. Everybody thinks they're going to leave to become a Jay-Z or a Beyonce and um, to have um, success. Um, not everybody can be Akon, um, but many are trying to leave just for that fact, thinking that that is um, the, the opportunities that might um, come to them. Although, although, in this case, I want to talk about a very sad situation. Um, it's come to my attention today that 52 Gambians have died. Um, the total number of people that have died has not been confirmed, but um, my suspicions from looking at the footage is that it's nearly over 300 people um, have perished at sea um, in, in, in a, an attempt to go the back way to find uh, opportunities in the West. So many families today, why am I making this program today is because many families are actually mourning their children here in um, the Gambia. I went to see a local friend in a local shop who I always buy from on a day-to-day -day basis and um, I was told that, you know, four of his family members um, have perished at sea. And this really hit me and I'm not sure if you remember seeing the interview that I did with Corona, when I appealed. Um, a lot of people are dying or on the high seas and the deserts, trying to just get to a place like England or France or Italy or somewhere. I got to say, yeah, when I read um, the stories and um, I see the press and I see the boats with, um, you know, children being washed up on the shores. Herona Dramit on his, his um, daytime show, his talk show on Paradise TV, I appealed to people, please do not go the back way. The West is not what you think it is. And the pavements are not, you know, they're not made of gold. And the life you think you're going to get is not the life you're going to receive. And I appeal to people not to go. But clearly, my tears, my urge, and, and my appeal has fallen on deaf ears. So we're here today to talk to Rabba Rabba, who's on my left, Hadi, who's on my right. Uh, Rabba Rabba is a Gambian who has tried to go the back way unsuccessfully, thankfully. Um, Hadi has had experience of um, people who have lost their lives going this way. Mello also, who's also our cameraman, has also um, experienced um, and known of people who have not returned. And of course, Adrian is part of the Blacksit family. And we have our views from a diasporian perspective, which I think is important in terms of sharing our experiences. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with um, Hadi here, ladies first. Um, and I'm just gonna ask you a couple of questions, if that's okay. I mean, introduce yourself to the Blacksit family. Say, hey, I'm Hadi. Hello, I'm Hadi. <laughs> Well, that's great. 
So, I mean, Hanny, we're, we're, we're saddened today to hear about this. But when I spoke to you about it, you said to me that this is happening on a regular basis. Can I ask you, you know, what do you know about the back way? And do you know anyone who's gone the back way? Yeah, I know a few people, my friends. But some of them die so bad. They have to cut them in pieces in this Arab land just to go and find something for themselves. But it is not easy with them there. Some of them stay there for two months, three months. They have to deport them back. When they come back, they're forced to go back again. They have to find the money to go back there. And when they go, they will not come back. We just have the photos that they are dead, but we cannot see their dead bodies. Up to today, their families cannot bury them. We don't know how they die. It's too sad. Okay. And the other boys, I was working with them, but it's too bad. I cannot see them again. So, what, literally, they go on boats or...? Yes. Some, like the other boy that passed away last month, he went back to Freetown and so one of our friends sent money for her to come back in Gambia. Then he used the money to go back. Unfortunately, he died in the desert. He died in the desert? In the desert, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's perilous. What's going on is perilous. I don't know. All right, so basically, I mean, that's a sad story. I mean, um, you said that people got cut up. I don't want to get too gory, but yes. what, what do you mean people got cut up? And who got cut up? How? I don't understand. They just, you know, sometimes when they go there, these Arab people, when they catch you, like two women sleeping in a room, they think you are lesbians. So when they catch you, they kill you in a bad way. Yes, they don't want to see woman and woman in one room. They want to see men to men in one room. If they catch you, you're gone. Wow, and they're just sleeping together because they don't, yes, they don't have, have place, to, place stay. to stay. Yes, but if they catch you sleeping woman to woman inside room, no excuse. Well, I never heard of this before. Yes. I, I, I've got, I've had like no idea about this. Um, um, the back way, I've I've heard about it. I had a friend, Adrian and I, didn't we, age? Yes. We had a friend who, um, he got bombed in Libya. And um, we were totally stunned, weren't we? Even to know that he, he, we heard that he had left, but the next thing we heard is that he'd been bombed to death in, in Libya, where he was staying um, to stay out of uh, trouble, because obviously he was illegal in the country. Where he stowed away, um, unfortunately, the uh, American government bombed that building. The, the military bombed the building, and he unfortunately became a, a casualty of, of that war. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he was a, a beautiful Gambian brother, a really nice soul, and, and you know, it's something that we remembered. And also, other people that we know that have left, that we've never even heard back from, right? Yeah. We've not even we've not even heard back from. Them. Okay. Even for me, I feel it. I, I, I mean, you know, I'm usually, I'm usually like bubbly and happy. And as soon as I heard the news, I was just distraught. And then when I realised that, you know, um, you know, Bamboo's a lovely man. And, you know, for him to lose, you know, I mean, this is for family members. And then as I got speaking to the, the, his, his, um, his friend, you know, she said to me that, you know, another family, they lost six members. They lost six members of their family. And, and I mean, this is destroying families. This is ripping people apart. I mean, Rabba Rabba, introduce yourself to the Black Sea family because you tried to go the back way, right? Mm -hmm. Since then. And you survived it. Yeah. yeah. I am Usman Job, um, known as Rabba Rabba, known as Benghazi, known as I'm a businessman. I feel sorry for this since happened about this bad way, you know, these people who pass away. I'm saying big sympathy to the family. The bad way, I went there since 96, I'm traveling to this bad way. I make 11 countries in Africa and I see a lot of sufferness. The Sahara is killing, the sea is killing. Mm -hmm. So these people, now, the, what, what can stop, stop this death in this world? That's what we need. And what caused this death, we want to know. Because these people are going to Europe. They say, I'm going to Europe. What are they going to look for in Europe? It is something lost them. They want to go and find it and bring it back. 
Bagwe is very dangerous. I make 11 countries. I start my journey in Senegal, Mali, Burkina Faso, Africa, Niger, Libya, Algeria, Morocco, Mauritania, and Guinea Bissau. And I start my journey with $1,000. The road is very critical. Many people, they die in the Sahara. Some people die in Libya through bombing. Some, they take them, they sell them to go and fight for the government or the disturbing affairs. You know, the road is very dangerous. So we, these people, we are trying to help to see how we're going to stop this bad way and how people will stay in our country, in, in, in our countries. We struggle for ourselves, we get what we want. But there is another question also, these people, what are they going to look for Europe? It is something lost for them. They support it, steal something and take it to Europe. And now they want to go and collect that thing and bring it back. Well, they want reparations. <laughs> you see what yeah. I mean? This is it. Yeah, yeah they, so, they want reparations. So this is not, it's a, it's a blood going on. I don't know where it came from, but there is something they are going to find there. So what we are saying now, the world, let them try and, and see what to do for the Africans, for them to stay in their country and stay there and work there, stopping this bad way, going to bad way. Look at these 50 something people who died in the 52, 52, 52 people. people. I mean, let me just say, and firstly, you know, my condolences to all of those families mm -hmm. and every single family, every single family um, across the continent that has lost a loved one. My heart, you know, um, you know, literally cries for you. I feel, you know, um, I have to address this. I have to address this. I cannot be, you know, um, have a conscience and not address this. I have a conscience. I have a heart. You know, I mean, Adrian, we were talking about, I'm just going to bring in Adrian now because we were talking about this because we were saying that we wanted to recruit um, an intern and we're saying enough is enough and that we feel that us in the diaspora, when we come back, we have a responsibility to, to also help the communities to create opportunities, uh, to create employment, and to work in harmony with those communities um, that uh, we repatriate to, regardless of whether it's Gambia or Rwanda or Tanzania, regardless of wherever it is or Ghana. And you know, we're here fighting for citizenship as well, because part of it is because we need to also be a part of the fabric of that society. And that's when you'll see a lot of inward investment flowing so it has to be a partnership of us working with the communities that we work with, but we also need to be a part of that community. And then you will see inward investment. I mean, I mean, Adrian, 52 Gambians, died at sea, yeah? Multiple funerals happening up and, happening up and down Gambia today. Yeah, enough is enough. You know, what, 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 what is your view? No more back ways, Mike, is what I think. No more back ways. Yeah, no more back ways. Great, greetings, greetings, Maxi family. As you know, today is a sad occasion, but um, it is great for us to hear the voice of the Gambians because uh, many of them have lost families, friends, with people trying to go to Europe, you know, just for them to feel they will find a way of better in their lives, you know. And um, we, from the diaspora, we're listening to what they are saying. You know, and um, I do want to encourage more people from the diaspora to reach out here to your brothers and sisters. We could come back here, we could invest, we could create jobs, we could create opportunities for them here. I've been living here for a while now and I see the skills of the people. You know, and uh, they're so skillful and it's a shame that they have to be losing their life going to Europe, a place that don't welcome us. Even though we're, we're the ones there, even we have citizenship, like my wife that was born there. We still don't even feel welcome there. So imagine the people are coming in to their country the back way, more or less illegal. How do you think they're going to be treating them? So what we have to do now as our people from the diaspora as well is to work and have solutions. Solutions are how we're going to create infrastructure here in Africa to keep our brothers and sisters on this beautiful continent. Um, when we met Rabba Rabba, he had a great, he had a great story to tell, you know, and he, he's appealing, he's appealing, he has exhausted every revenue to try and get funding for him to get his story out about his dreadful journey trying to get into Europe the back way, you know, fortunately for him, he returned back and he didn't get caught up, you know, perhaps he could have lost his life, 
I know he has children, you know. So, if anyone out there watching this program, I would like to help Rubber Rubber get his story out there. You know, sometimes just small donations from everyone could give him that little collective that he wants so that he could get his story out. And perhaps if more people like Rubber Rubber come forward, it will stop some of these deaths. You know, because they could actually tell people what's happening, what you expect. Because some people might not know what they expect on this journey. You know, and the best way to understand your road ahead is to ask those coming back. Because then they have experienced it and they have seen it. And it don't work losing lives. I mean, our neighbor here, you know, we go to his shop every day, we talk, we laugh, we're happy. But today is morning because he lost four family members. You know, and I mean, let's put ourselves in their position. You know, and just imagine that these people trying to go to Europe to better their life. And Europe, they're the ones that I'm blaming for this. Yeah. Yeah? The damage that they've done to Africa over the years. And they're still not thinking about evil trying to make with peace. You understand? And that is why I'm saying to my African brothers and sisters here, you all have to stand up and fight for reparations. It's your right to fight for reparations. We're not begging the West nothing. You understand? But we need to get back reparations. Even our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean, our brothers and sisters in America, Europe, everywhere. Slavery affects all of our lives. Yes. All of us have a story to tell. And what the Europeans are doing, they see all of these things happening and they don't care. They literally don't care, you know? Because yes, they, they could fund some of the programs here in Africa to stop people losing their life to get to Europe. And the worst thing, when they do get to Europe, they don't treat them with no respect there. No, no respect, you know? And I wish that my brothers and sisters don't have to risk their life going there because it's not no paradise there, you know? They try to make out this paradise, but don't be fooled. It's no paradise in the West for black people, none whatsoever. You know, we're all over there, we try trying our best there, but we're not welcome. You know, it's just an illusion of giving of inclusion, you know? But my brothers and sisters, I want you all to seriously consider coming here and invest in Africa, you know? Let's stop this backward. Let's stop our brothers and sisters in losing their life to go to um, Europe and America. Let's stop it. There's nothing there for them, you know? And I mean, the reason why we bring them here and because I want these young people, other young people still that they're here, you know, they're working with us. So some of us here is providing employment for them. And I want more people from the diaspora to do that. Yeah. You understand? And I will say this, 40 years ago to now, we have some, some of the more millionaires as black people. You understand? We got to put it back here, you know? The same way our ancestors died against the will going to the West. These brothers they're doing it now and it's just that they think they're doing it from a free will. But it's the West and the damage that they do to Africa that causing them. It's like slavery all over again. Yeah. You understand? They need to bring back some of the pain they take from here. You understand the evil? You know? How could any government in the West sit down and say Africans losing their life to come there when they could simply start paying by reparations to the continent that they have destroyed over the years? People. You know? And they, they, they should really try their best and look at the impact that they had on Africa over all these years. You know, all those blood at sea, people have lost their life going the back way. I put this blood on the West. It's on their shoulders. They stole from, they stole from Africa. And I have no intention of giving back and I keep coming and taking and taking and taking. You know, the world is running empty now for them. So with the black people in diaspora, please, Let's come back here, you know, create jobs, create opportunity for our brothers and sisters. There are many of us over there that are millionaires now, you know, and some of us really need to come back here and invest back into Africa, you know. I would like to just give a minute silence for those who have lost their life and to the families here that mourning the loss of their loved ones. It's important we just give a minute silence for them in respect.
Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. Yes. I agree. I agree. I mean, you know, I applaud you for saying that because you know, what you said is powerful, yeah. and there are philanthropists everywhere. Mm -hmm. But how far is that philanthropy reaching? Mm -hmm. And you know, what are the agendas behind their philanthropy? Because philanthropy is needed here in the continent. And there are very wealthy Africans here on the continent. And the thing is, if the whole of Africa, if the whole of Africa could agree that it's time, it's time in order for us to collect our reparations, our reparatory justice, all of our collective compensation resource-wise, financial-wise, social-wise, how can we even get some of those things back? I've lost my identity, I've lost my language, I've lost my family, I've lost my legacy, I've lost my culture. I I've lost everything. I'm coming here because I feel like this is home, but you know, it's only what I feel. And to know that we're running away, we're running away from hostility, we're running away from racism, we're running away from the dump. And I'm going to say it again. Stop going the back way to go to England and Europe. It's a dump for you. It's a dump for you. When you're going there, you're not going to be living in Buckingham Palace. You're not going to be living the high life. It's not what you think it is. There are so many homeless people. There are so many destitute people. There are so many people living on food banks and, 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 and handouts and, and, and clothes from charity shops and sleeping on the street in the cold and dying of hypothermia. If you don't believe me, go on Google and look at how many homeless people are dying in the cold. Look at how many homeless people are making suicide pacts. The back way is a suicide pact. Mothers, fathers, I'm appealing to you, don't sell your land. Don't send, sell your cattle. Don't sell, don't sell your children into this horrible, horrible suicide death pact. Don't do it, because your conscience will never live knowing that you sent your niece, your nephew, your son, your daughter to their death. To their death. How many people actually really get through? How many people actually live the life without getting deported and coming back with nothing, only to face an absolute uh, um, um, disgrace by those same family? Humiliation by those families? How many people have to go the back way and then go and work on someone else's national insurance number and adopt an identity that isn't even theirs? And then have to run from job to job? and then live on the street and be homeless, or become a drug mule, or become, um, you know, some kind of a prostitute. Why? Why? What you think is great to go and all live, eight of you huddled in one little flat? Six bunk beds in one room, sharing one bag of rice that has to feed everybody? You think it's right nice, 16 people sharing one toilet? You think it's nice being used and abused? You think it's nice to face racism and hostility? You think it's nice? You think it's nice having to work nearly 24 hours a day just to send money back for your family? Where your health is deteriorating, where your life is deteriorating, where you're living in the cold? Where you can't even afford to eat or heat yourself properly or wear clothes? For those of you that go on student visas and those of you that have families that can afford to take them, yes, that is a different story, but the back way is no easy journey. It's a death trap and I'm begging you, I'm pleading with you, I am pleading with you all, please do not make this decision. The money that you're taking, £5,000 you're paying to go into a boat that's going to capsize, you're going to drown. You're going to sit there and watch your children drown, watch your husband drown, watch your wife drown, watch your children die in the sea, watch them die 
of dehydration in the desert. Watch them suffocate in the back of lorries. Why? Why? I'm sorry, but I can't contain my emotions because enough is enough is enough is enough is enough. How many more of us have to die? Many. Yeah? And this is because why? Let's really look at the real enemy. Let's face the real enemy. The real enemy here is the colonial and neo-colonial enslavement that is happening still today on the continent. The payments that you're still making to these colonial powers. Because that's what they are. They have the power to take and to steal and to rob. And you know what? This is not right. And we have to stop doing it. Enough is enough. We want our reparations. We want our taxes back. We want our resources back. We want our land back. And this needs to stop. I've got one last thing to ask everybody. And then this is, this is it for today. Because I want to put this straight out. Um, in a, a respect to the families that have lost so many, so many of their wonderful loved ones.